to sustain the rally, I mean, we saw the market drop by 12% this morning. To get a sustained rally, does the U.S. need to be part of the deal? Yes, uh, absolutely, Manas. I think it does need to be a part of the deal. I think that's Russia's precondition. And they have said that we are not going to be cutting on by ourselves. This is a global crisis. And if you think about why the OPEC deal fell apart, remember, in Vienna, this was one of the big issues because... Russia has been pointing out how the U.S. has been taking market share, and now they absolutely require them to join the cup. Amrita, great to speak to you today. Um, how far does Brent need to fall to really precipitate some kind of agreement, even if it is just an emergency temporary one? So I don't think it's the price of oil, because even at like, current prices after the rally, they, everybody is still hurting. You've heard uh, President Putin talk about $42 being the requirement for Russia. Everybody, I mean, be it non-OPEC producers or OPEC producers, they're all hurting. The, the problem is right now this is, this is much more political. You also heard uh, Putin make statements about or uh, accuse Saudi Arabia of go, going after shale producers, which then Saudi Arabia had to come out on Saturday and deny. This is getting quite difficult on a political level. And that's why, I mean, they had to delay the meeting from today to Thursday. But we have been told that unless and until there is a breakthrough uh, through the back channel talks, there may not be talks. And in any case, I think it's important to point out, no amount of cuts is going to be enough to offset the lower demand. Because they're talking about 10. The reality is demand is probably down by 25 million barrels per day. Well, Amrita, we, we, we can posture about the 10 million and the 10% cut. That would be 10% of global output. What would be meaningful to you? Would it be the amount that the Saudis cut, whether Norway comes on board? What, what is the alpha in the 10 million? If that's the consensus number, talk me through what needs to come from the big bulwarks, from Saudi, from Russia, and potentially, potentially from the U.S.? I think that's a very good question because we can't get the 10 million barrels per day to add up. Uh, remember, the talk right now is OPEC will cut from their inflated April levels. I mean, all these guys have pushed up output to record levels, and now the talk is, oh, we're going to cut from those levels. That's another thing Putin disagreed with, saying, if you're going to cut, you need to cut from Q1 levels. I mean, if Saudi Arabia goes to 9 million barrels per day or perhaps lower towards 8, that would be meaningful. But that's not what the talk is. The talk is that they'll go to 10. 10 million barrels per day is more today than what they were producing in Q1. That was pre the crisis. That's why the 10 million barrels per day number is such a red herring. There's going to be a lot of creative mathematics going behind that number to get to that. Real cuts, in our kind of estimation, is only going to be 6 or 7. The thing is, the market is going to force these shut-ins one way or the other because we are going to run out of storage space. Yeah. Yeah, and on the storage space, Amrita, when when are we going to run out of that storage space? I think mean, that's the million-dollar question right now. On our numbers, our estimate is that sometime in May, probably towards the back half of May, you run out of global storage space. But that depends on the fact that demand deterioration that we factored into our balances, about 23, 24 million barrels per day for April, doesn't come in even worse. If demand declines are even worse, then you could be hitting storage tank tops this month. And then, irrespective of what OPEC does, because the deal will only kick in from May, prices have to go down very, very fast to shut-in levels before any upside can be, uh, can be achieved. 